In this live training, I'm going to cover how to edit and quick edit a slide. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's see if we can get through this quickly. All right, I'm in ProPresenter 7 here, and you can see I've got just a basic presentation loaded. Uh, this is a sermon notes section. And um, let's say I wanted to make some changes to a slide. I've got a couple ways to get there. Uh, first, I can just open up the editor, and since my uh, current slide is in the top corner of this, uh, the editor is going to automatically open to that first slide. And so I'm here in an editor, there was nothing on the slide, so we have nothing to see here. Within the sidebar, I can actually scroll down and select something that I want to make an edit to, like let's say the sermon title. And from here, I could then select an element and move that element uh, just with a click and drag. I can also use the arrow keys, which you might not be able to see, but there are small movements when I move the arrow keys. If I hold the shift key as I use the arrows, it will move a little further at one time. And as I drag, these yellow lines actually connect, show when you're connecting the box to a certain part of um, the, the slide. So center, top, bottom, uh, that sort of thing, midpoints, that sort of stuff. Now, once I select a text, I can double click in there and I can make a change. So let's just say I wanted a lowercase t instead of capital T. It works just like any text editor. So um, everything you would expect is there. Um, now, in this particular case, I have text on a background but as you can see, when I click out here, I cannot select that background. That background is essentially baked into the slide. There is something you can do to make it so that that background can be adjusted. And let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to my show. I'm going to find that title slide, uh, which is here, slide six. And when I right click, I have an option to convert media action to slide element. Um, it's kind of a crazy way to name a particular tool within ProPresenter, but let's just go ahead and select it. And as it's selected, you see the end result is nothing really different. But let's go back in to edit this slide. Now, instead of cho choosing edit at the top, we're going to right click and choose edit slide. And this will take the editor specifically to that one slide. Well, now you can see as I select um, the uh, background, it has put a box around it, and now I could move that background. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just drag it off for dramatic effect, but there it is. It's been moved. Um, I can hit Command Z to put it back. Uh, no big deal. We can undo. Uh, but uh, what you can see over here to the bottom left is we now have two layers of items, and that uh, Joshua, Joshua CCLI image is uh, now an element that can be modified. If we go to another slide, you can see that that particular um, element of the background is not there. We had to actually do that convert to slide element option in order to make that actually work. Now, there are layers of things that we can put in here. And let's just say, for example, I wanted to put an item um, in a box. And so I'm going to actually draw this box over top of my text. And in order to take advantage of the layers, I'll come down into my layer editor and I'm just going to drag it down to put the box below the text. Um, so now we have the ability to do that. There are a lot of things you can do within the editor and it will work a lot like um, what you may expect to see from uh, maybe PowerPoint or uh, some other kind of image editor. Uh, so in this case, I've selected my text and let's say I wanted to put a drop shadow on there. I select shadow, now I've got a shadow. There's a lot that you can do within that. Say I want a stroke and I want it to be a black stroke around the letters. Um, you can see now I've added that. These are just simple things that you could add into your edits on a slide. Um, just know that that's there. Now if it's a text element, if I go back to my show, I might want to make a change to a text element. And looking at this particular slide for Sermon Notes, uh, slide 12, there's actually an error. We should have S on the word others. Uh, that S was left out. Well, as I'm presenting um, and following along with service, if I'm able to notice that before um, anything is required of that slide, um, you can see there's nothing on the screen yet. I can still right click and quick edit that slide without disrupting everything else that's going on in the service. So I might be able to come in here, make a quick change. I'm just selecting straight in the text and I'm going to hit the X button. And that slide has now been modified without even being shown on the screen. Again, that requires a right click to do that. 
if we were to use a standard left click before the right click as we select it, um, that slide goes live. So just know that um, you could accidentally trigger a slide. Editing during a service is not recommended, but if you had to do it and you're very comfortable with the right click option, right click and quick edit will get you into the ability to edit that slide uh, without disrupting anything. Now in the case of this where I've added uh, on slide six this weird box that we won't use, um, but I want to get rid of it, our quick edit isn't going to give me an option to remove move that box. There's no way for me to actually select the graphic elements of this slide within the quick editor. I can modify the text, but not the graphics. So in a case like this, I have to go into the editor in order to be able to remove that box. And the easiest way is to just select it here, and I'm going to hit the delete key to remove it. So that's how you would quickly edit a slide. Um, if you wanted to maybe change the order of a slide, you can have a slide highlighted and drag and drop to change the order. Um, you can also copy or cut and paste. So let's say I wanted a title slide to be over here after this blank. I can right click, copy, I can right click again and paste. So now I've actually added an additional slide. And if I wanted to, I could right click and delete the slide that was um, unneeded there. I could use the cut and paste option. So let's say I want to move Eugene's name. I'm going to cut. It's going to remove that slide altogether, and I'm going to put it here in front of the title by right-clicking and choose Paste. It works just like you might expect from a typical uh, text editor or any other kind of application with cut and paste, uh, drag and drop. All of that still works the same here. Now you can select multiple slides, and here I've clicked in between slides uh, so that it essentially deselects everything. If you hold the command key and you click on a slide, it puts this box around it, but it doesn't actually trigger the box or trigger the slide to be displayed on screen. It just selects it. And so I can actually select multiple slides here. And let's say I wanted to make a massive change by highlighting all of these items. I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to move them to the bottom of the presentation and paste them in. Now, if you were paying attention to our preview, after all those edits, I never once displayed anything on screen because I was careful to use the right click um, commands instead of a left click. So just know that you can highlight and select multiple items by holding the command key down um, as you select. You can also uh, select a single slide and hold shift to select everything in between. That's doable. You can drag and drop, or just simply drag, uh, while holding the mouse over top of various slides to select them as well. Um, so that's just a, an option. If you start in the gray and drag, you can select multiple items. Um, so those are, those are just different ways you can work with some of the elements within a slide. There are little notes at the bottom of each of these slides as well, and you can modify those too. So if we right click, and uh, actually I'm going to choose one that's higher up just to make sure that the menu shows up in your screencast. Um, so if I right click, I can choose label, and I could make a label. Um, so I'm just going to edit it, and I would say this one, instead of saying service note, um, is just going to say uh, happy note. All right, and when I hit return, it automatically updates that. I could even change the color of that happy note to pink if I wanted. Um, and so that only affects the one slide uh, that was related to it in this particular way of editing. There are groups that you can make. Um, so if you wanted um, to group certain items, certain slides into being like, say, a verse or a chorus, that would apply to the music. Um, we, I don't know that we would necessarily use groups at all during a teaching uh, portion of a service, but there are options for that as well. Um, we can also look into specifics on this slide using the inspector. Um, so if we go into an inspector, and you will need to be familiar with the inspector uh, because we use that quite a bit. On this particular slide, there's not a lot showing here except that um, here's the path to the image that's being displayed. Um, it shows us the dimensions of that slide. We can see properties of it where it's been scaled to fit the screen. Um, maybe the slide is or is not the right shape or size for this particular format. You can make a change here. 
you can show where it's aligned, rotation of it. If it was a video, you can make adjustments to how long the video plays with in and out points. We can also add effects to a slide. So let's say I wanted to uh, filter this color to be a little bit more on the blue side. Um, you can make that change by adding an effect um, to that particular slide. And then when that slide is displayed, it actually displays the effects with the filters and everything. Um, so just know that you have a lot of uh, room to make adjustments within the inspector. Uh, just make sure that you check with the production lead at the time to verify that those particular changes are the ones you want. Let's take a look at a video, for example. Uh, we're going to go to this little video background. Um, it is designed to be a background behind the lyrics. So if we take a look, it's actually uh, very clearly showing our lyrics over top of the background. And in order for this to last the full duration of the song, we need to go into Inspector and make sure that it's set up to be a loop slide. And so we can go into our properties and the playback behavior is set to loop. Um, if we didn't set it to loop, after 30 seconds, that slide will just stop. And so that's what our stop option is. Uh, we also have the ability in, in a case where maybe a slide w or a video wasn't created to be an infinite loop type of video, you may need to create a dissolve transition at the end. That's what the, um, the various loops options are where it says soft loop. And so we could set up a soft loop if we wanted it to do sort of a dissolve at the end of its video, dissolve into the beginning of the video, and it creates a loop that way. Uh, but for now, since we've got a, a slide that was designed with an infinite loop, uh, we can just use the loop option. But you can use the various inspector tools to do lots with your video. Um, you can even add effects to a video. Um, in this case, it actually has a color effect um, that was automatically applied. You can apply multiple effects uh, to a single slide or video. Um, you can also set an in point and an out point of a video. So it will only play in certain sections. Um, we can also change the um, the thumbnail image. So this image that you see here, uh, of course, we're probably not going to be able to notice much if I were to change it, but I could set the thumbnail to the current frame that's in my screen, and it will adjust that too. I'm going to reset my in and out points just in case we need to use this slide in the future, um, but I went ahead and left all the rest the same. So that's your inspector. Um, that is pretty much all that I need to or know to think about showing you right now with editing slides. Uh, but this will get you a head start on just the basic um, assembly of our services, reordering things, making quick edits on the fly. And when you get to a point where you are an editor within ProPresenter, uh, an editor for our, our organization, uh, you will actually have um, a little bit more insight into the service flow, and you'll have the ability to um, you know, create these slideshows from scratch. And we may try to get into that in a future training, but for now, just knowing how to do those quick edits and the small changes um, in the moment will help you with uh, service flow as well. So hope that helps, and keep checking back for more.